Hey, good morning and welcome. Patriot Radio News Hour live on this Tuesday, the Valley of the Sun. I'm Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Trading Group, legal, lawful, constitutional tender. That is what we do, and we do it better than anybody. 800 592 That is the toll-free number. The website at allamericangold.com. Uh, all, all the stuff you need to keep you in the know out there at allamericangold.com. And uh, right now, September, we're getting ready for the end of the quarter. Uh, the quarter ends uh, this uh, this day next week so we're one week away uh, all of you medals plans participants uh, we're going to actually start shipping medals plans on monday uh, so monday tuesday uh, we'll we'll have them ready wendy is already uh back i, I locked her up in the shipping room and told her not to come out as she's uh compiling uh, the medals plan. By the way, this will be a record, uh, a record for medal plan uh, dollars, and also a record for the number of people participating in our medals plan. Uh, which those two kind of go together, right? The, the more people participating, the more dollars uh, we have. If you don't know what we're talking about, uh, our medals plan is really we're, uh, an outreach from us as a way to get everybody the opportunity to get involved. Uh, you need at least $100 a month. There is no maximum. Uh, I will tell you that we have uh, several people at 2000 a month. That's the highest we have in our plans when we have several people there. Uh, but we have everywhere from $100 up to 2000 Like I said, there is no limit. It's kind of our version of a 401k. Um, the only difference is, is every quarter, so four times a year, we ship you your product. and Or you come and pick it up. If you come and pick up your product from our office here in Phoenix or our office in Colorado, uh, there are no fees. We don't have, and, and that's one of the other things, unlike... Uh, you know, when you talk about 401Ks and, and they just whack you every year, you know, don't worry, it's only 2%, so they say. And that's really only the best plans. Uh, most of them are still getting you for 3 or 4% a year. Um, but we charge no fees. Uh, how it works, you leave a, a credit card or a debit card on file with us. You select the day of the month for us to uh, withdraw the funds or charge your card uh, we ask from the 1st through the 28th. 1st through the 28th, you pick the day. And then, like I said, uh, once a quarter we ship you the product. The best part is, and you guys know this, right? We give volume discounts. Uh, you know, yesterday we ran a special where if you bought 10 or more, you got to pay less. One of the great things about uh, the metals program is we pool all of the money together. And so everything that gets put into the metals program, you're buying it at a discount. So you get volume discounted pricing, even if you're at $100, right? You get that volume discount pricing. Uh, and like I said, uh, we ship four times a year at the end of every quarter. It's a great way to just kind of buy you know, quarter after quarter and, and take advantage of, you know, the market's time they go up and down, up and down, but you're always buying. You're buying and cost averaging uh, the whole way through. And, and we also understand for a lot of people, stuff happens. Hey, maybe you're, you're at $100 a month, and that's been working for you, but then all of a sudden, you know, I don't know, you need to, Four new tires on the car. I use that example a lot. You know that that's depending on the tire, right? You're looking at I think I mean minimum what four hundred bucks for four new tires minimum. You know most of most of you out there are probably paying six, seven, eight hundred dollars for four new tires. You 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 may be like, hey, I need to take a month off or I need to take a, a quarter off. Great, call us. What does it cost to put your plan on hold? Nothing. 
Nothing. Right? Just tell us. We'll stop. What does it cost to restart it? Nothing. What does it cost to sign up? Nothing. What's the what, what's the fee? There are none. Right? We charge a shipping fee if we have to ship it to you. And even that, we try to prorate it as best we can. Unfortunately, now the post office just charges a fortune for everything. Uh, but other than that, uh, that's that's really how the plan works. And and if you want more detail on it, go to allamericangold.com. Uh, we have the metals program icon. Just click on it, and you can read about it. Or you can always give us a call here uh, at at Patriot and ask some questions. Uh, uh, if you want to sign up for the program, uh, it's a good time. October is a good time because it'll be the a fresh start, right? Will be uh, October will mark the start of the new quarter. Uh, if you want us to get into that, 800-951-0592. Uh, got a lot of ground to cover as usual. Today, the big news, the president was speaking uh, in front of the U.N. General Assembly. Uh, obviously, Iran was on his mind. China and trade talks on his mind. Actually moving the markets. I'll tell you what the president had to say about uh, China, what's happening there. Uh, obviously, we, we had that weird event happen where China, the trade guys, left early, didn't go to the agriculture stuff. Uh, they did order soybeans. They definitely have done that. I'll tell you about that as well. Patriot Radio News Hour. Don't touch that up. 800 So we're sitting here. We're trying to figure it out, right? The... The whole China trade thing, and really there's only one question. Are we going to give in? That's it. That's the only question I see uh, out there. And, and of course, Wall Street is, really would love for that to happen. Uh, why, I don't know. For stock price, really? We're willing to to allow what they're doing for a stock price. I mean, it makes no sense. Matter of fact, uh, there are several companies now have come forward and have told the administration China has not only has it not lessened, not stopped the stealing of intellectual property, they've actually ramped it up since the whole trade war started. Uh, the president was speaking in front of the U.N. General Assembly. This actually, the Dow was actually up today. Gold and, and silver were down a little bit this morning. Uh, and they were, oh, you know, positive stuff on the train. Because, <laughs> if, if you want to believe it, uh, it, it again, uh, it's kind of like that, that phone call from months ago. Oh, China called us twice. I'm like, we didn't call you. Apparently, they they asked the Chinese trade representatives on Friday to leave. We asked them to leave. Why we would do that, I don't know. Uh, they, no one wanted to elaborate, but apparently the president was surprised, uh, which kind of me, le, me, leads me to believe that's not really what happened. It doesn't matter. But either way, they want to be optimistic. Uh, I believe in two weeks, in two weeks, the vice premier from China is going to be in town. That is, you know, their, kind of like their head negotiator is supposed to be in town. And then remember, on October 15th, the new amped up tariffs, at least a part of the amped up tariffs, is supposed to kick in. So everybody is hoping for, for niceties, right? Uh, the president to talk positive about trade, the treasury secretary to talk positive about trade, China to talk positively about trade. Uh, this morning it was confirmed. Uh, now we knew uh, a, about a week and a half ago, I knew China had bought some soybeans. I haven't seen anything on, on hogs, uh, but I know that they had removed the tariffs on soybeans and hogs the Chinese had. Uh, but I, I hadn't heard anything on hog purchases. But this morning, China actually uh, committed to buying 
uh, I think it was two to three tons of soybeans in addition to what they'd already bought. So the soybeans uh, buying continues from the Chinese. they got to feed their people. Uh, you know, it's funny. is China's now exempted, I think, 16 products uh, from the tariff list. We've exempted like 1,000 plus products from their deal. Just Apple alone. Uh, we gave them 10 exemptions yesterday. Uh, but but that was another one of the things that the market was, oh, look, we're letting Apple, you know, Apple makes, and, and again, I don't even know if Apple makes it. But they, their Mac Pro, this is not the laptops you buy at the Apple Store. This is These are $6,000 plus machines. They assemble it in Austin, Texas. Uh, Apple doesn't even say how many they sell. It's, it's not a big number, but they do assemble them in Austin, Texas. All of it's made in China, but they assemble it here, so I think they get the slap made in America on it. Uh, but but uh, they, they said it's a new thing. It's not new. They've been doing this for a while there, uh, but I guess they're coming out with the latest version of it, so the, hence the, the new part. But this had everybody all excited. Hey, you know, we're starting to play nice. China's buying some stuff. They took off some tariffs. We took off some tariffs. Uh, everybody's making nice comments. And maybe we're going to get a deal done. Uh, that kind of looks like it went out the window this morning. Uh, speaking at the United Nations, Trump said that China has not adopted promised reforms. Now, again, I think that goes back to the remember when we were 90 percent to a deal <laughs> right china just let us talk the whole time oh, okay and they wrote stuff down and and of course we thought that meant they agreed apparently uh china just said well we just wanted you to show us all the stuff you wanted uh and then we we're just going to tell you no china uses heavy state subsidies and steals intellectual property the president said the WTO needs drastic change. Oh, boy. Now, that I can get on with. And really, I don't even know why we, we need the WTO, right? The, at the end of the day, if, if we have a trade partner that doesn't want to respect us, we shouldn't do business with them. We wouldn't do business, you know, as a business owner. Okay? So here I am. I'm a business owner. And... If I had a, a customer or a wholesaler, let's just say one of my wholesalers, and, and they were treating me poorly, I would stop. I'd find a different wholesaler, right, and vice versa, right? If you out there, all you customers out there, hey, the, Joe does a bad job, and, and I, I, I found a different gold dealer, right? That, that's what we should be able to do. And, and really, at the end of the day, we're in this mess because these companies wanted their stock price to go up, and they didn't care what price they had to pay by going into China. If China's stealing from them, they should leave. Right? But here's the problem. China builds all the stuff. Right? Because not only did the, the company go there. See, that, that was, that's fine. Right, you know, think about Apple. Yeah, we 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 uh, we went there and, and uh, we we sell iPhones there. Okay, that's fine. If China was misbehaving, they can say, okay, well, we're leaving. But here's the problem: Apple decided, hey, we want to build all of our cell phones there, and so did all these other companies. Right? They 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 can't leave. Because if they leave, right, they're like, well, now we got to find a new place to build stuff. And as I re remember, all these deals that they announced, oh, yeah, we're leaving China. We're going to Vietnam or we're going to Mexico. We're... That was decided years ago. It takes years to set up supply chain. It just does. This is, you know, think about it. No stores want any inventory. They want the least amount of inventory possible, and they want those, you know, hey, right as we run out, right before we run out, the next shipment comes in. 
I mean, that's how it works. And and so to set up supply chain, it, not only it's not just about getting the permits and doing all those things, building the building, uh, hiring the the people, getting the equipment. A lot of this equipment you've seen it on TV. You know, they got robotic arms and this and that. Right? It, I mean, it's high tech stuff. It's not like you go down to Home Depot. Right? And, and go buy it off the shelf. Hey, I'm getting ready to open up a, a new plant in Saigon. Let's go down to Saigon Home Depot and we get what we need there. It takes a long time. You know, it's like the oil fields in Saudi Arabia. I don't know who to believe. Saudi say it'll be ready next week. Wall Street Journal yesterday said it's going to be eight months. Because that's how long it takes to manufacture some of this stuff. And then once you have that done, you know, you train the people and whatnot. You also got to have the supply chain, right? Do we got the trucks? Do they have the trucks that can come to our warehouse, pick up the product? Do they have the capacity to to ship us all the supplies we need to build the stuff? So we got to have trucks in, trucks out. Then, of course, it's got to go on a boat, right? So where's the port? I mean, there's a lot of things that go in. It takes years. And now, of course, the president's saying, hey, we need drastic change at the WTO. The president said he has been meeting with CEOs. One in particular, Micron, about the uh, intellectual property theft that has been recently occurring in China. So... Uh, set, and, and Micron's not the only one. A lot of these tech companies are reporting that China is con, uh, is continuing to steal intellectual property. I don't even know how we can deal with them in good faith. And then he says the world expects Beijing to honor its treaty on Hong Kong. So that's the first time I've heard the president actually even talk about Hong Kong. And, and, of course, obviously the Chinese, uh, I don't think they have any intentions of honoring that treaty where Hong Kong's supposed to kind of be self-ruled. Uh, I don't see that happening. Uh, and then the president uh, reiterated that he is not going to make a bad deal for the sake of getting a deal done with China. Uh, the Dow, which was up over 100 points, is now down. 100 points and falling here. Uh, the s and is down 17. The NASDAQ's down another. By the way, Netflix. I never understood Netflix, but Netflix is, is you know, they, they do the movies, right? It, it's kind of a, they stream programming, and now they're doing their own programming, but it's, it's uh, I guess, the uh, replacing of, of cable TV, if you will. They don't create a ton of jobs. I mean, they create some. It's not like they don't create any, but uh, they're part of the uh, of the big group of Facebook, Apple, Google, right, and Netflix that has really uh, made up a large, large part of the gains on Wall Street. Uh, Netflix is in, uh, in trouble. They actually went neg- they're negative uh, for the year. Uh, which is part of the reason why the Nasdaq's down 100 points and the Dow's down down 100 points. Uh, as again, you know what Netflix is finding out? Programming's expensive, right? And, and all these shows, it was one thing when they were replaying shows that you already knew were popular, right? That that worked out good. Hey, we, we got friends or we got cyber. Like, those were good shows. It's another thing when you make your own shows, then you realize, uh-oh, Hey, that one show was a home run. Let's do another one. Oh, there's another home run. I got it. Let's do five new ones. And then all of a sudden you do five new shows and they all bomb. You're just out the money. So uh, uh, the problems there for for Netflix today, uh, putting pressure on stocks. Gold's up uh, five, six, now uh, 1530 uh, on gold and rising silver uh, which briefly, briefly got to 18 and a quarter, all the way back now, 1853, 1853 
on on silver as the president kind of put a damper uh, on the trade talks with China. And, and think about what he said. They continue to operate the same way. Yeah, they bought some soybeans. And again, I want, I'm want i hoping that they bought some hogs too. I, I haven't seen it, but let's just assume that they have. But they're still stealing our property, right? They're still stealing intellectual property. As a matter of fact, in most cases, they've ramped up the theft uh, of intellectual property. They're still not honoring their commitments. They've gone backwards on what they agreed to do with Hong Kong. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't see uh, the reason for optimism. And again, I've said it all along. What we're really asking China to do is not be a communist nation. It was probably the first thing we should have set up before we ever went there. But, hey, you know, for a stock price and a bonus, Wall Street will do just about anything. This is the Phyllis Schlafly Report, a daily broadcast from Phyllis Schlafly Eagles. And we're upholding the legacy of Phyllis Schlafly, grassroots activist, author of 27 books, and articulate voice for traditional values for more than 70 years. Now, here's the president of Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, Ed Martin. One of the issues facing parents today is a new threat, the threat of so-called drag queen story hours at local libraries. At these events, young children are directly exposed to the highly sexualized culture of transgenderism by drag queens themselves. Most parents would look at something like this and wonder how it was ever allowed to happen. It seems totally out of character from everything libraries represent to so many of us. The truth is, America has been heading down this road for a long time now. Concerned parents like the late Phyllis Schlafly have been decrying the indecency allowed in public libraries for decades. The issue of drag queen story hours didn't come out of nowhere, by the way. It started with the introduction of pro-gay storybooks for children. A few parents protested when books like Heather Has Two Mommies and Daddy's Roommate were added to the library shelves to indoctrinate our children. However, in most cases, there just wasn't enough of an outcry to remove these books from the shelves. As one librarian put it, we've been used to a parent coming in or a pastor coming in, a community member worried about a particular book. Most parents chose not to take action because they could just stop their kids from checking the book out, so the library largely ignored concerns. Then the emboldened leftist librarians started outright defending pornography. The Children Internet Protection Act offered filtering software at absolutely no cost to prevent children from accessing pornography on library computers. But many libraries found loopholes or turned the offer down outright. The libraries claim to be defending the right to free access to information. They also claim removing pornography from libraries discriminated against poor people because apparently they think poor people are the ones who are going to the library to see pornography. Their arguments were flimsy by even the lowest standards, but parents were largely silent. Now we have these drag queen story hours. As far as I'm concerned, this has gone far enough. I'm tired of libraries using our tax dollars to peddle trash to our kids. Let's stand up against this indecency before it gets even further out of hand. Our kids are counting on us more than ever. This has been the Phyllis Schlafly Report from Phyllis Schlafly Eagles. The liberal agenda is corrupting classrooms in colleges and schools across the country. If you're a parent, teacher, or administrator who really cares about our children, we promise to keep you informed at phyllisschlafly.com. And let us hear from you at phyllisschlafly.com. Thanks for listening, and join us again next time for the Phyllis Schlafly Report. Gold is on the move. Silver coming right along with it. Uh, I think silver's got $20 in its sight here, uh, 1850, 1860. uh, And we know how little brother is. When he gets excited one way or the other, silver moving a dollar, two dollars in a day, is is kind of par for the course. We saw it drop a dollar what a week ago on well of course what we know now is uh just profit taking. Right? All the way back at seventeen fifty I told you I told you then uh I really, really liked the way it was looking. Uh now of course uh got twenty back in its sights here. Uh gold's looking listen, eighteen fifty. Write it down. We break that that means 1600 is going to fall, which means 1700 So that's the second gap 
in the gold chart. We filled the first gap. So remember, I told you if gold broke 1361 earlier this year, it was going to go to 14, and when it went, when it got to 14, it was going right to 50. That was the last of the three big drops in 2013. Gold suffered three massive drops over a five-day period that took the price from 1900 to 1400. The last of those drops occurred right at 50, from 1,500 to 1,400. We filled that one. The second leg was from 1,700 to 1,580. It did that in a day, one day. So that means there's no chart resistance. And remember, why is that important? Because most of the trading is done by computers. Their little algorithms just tell it what to do, right? There's no real thinking going on. It's just algorithms. And remember the first, the last leg, that 14 to 1500. It did that in less. It did that in just under 30 days. It covered that that hundred dollar spread. So this next one's a hundred and twenty dollar spread. I imagine it very similar. My guess is it'll fill that uh, within you know a month or so. Gold will go uh, from fifteen eighty to that seventeen hundred price point. And here's what's funny is the next gap it isn't that far off. It's only another. I and I'll get the exact numbers next week. I'll do a show next week on it. Uh, but like at seventeen twenty five, maybe seventeen thirty five to to uh eight almost what is it like eighteen fifty that's the that was the first one uh will we cover all three of them this year uh I hope not because that'll mean it, it got a lot worse quickly uh I do believe we've already done the first one I do believe we'll do the second one I think the these first two are kind of baked in. I think next year, and I've already told you this, I told you this uh, several weeks ago, uh, we, I, we'll see new all-time highs uh, in the next 12 months, maybe 18 at the most. But I think within 12, uh, there was a big guy, uh, uh, Tucker, was out on Kitco, E.B. Tucker. He does a lot of analysis there, uh, calling for a 50% rise in gold, and it'll be quick. Uh, it, it was talking about debts and all those things. Uh, you know, uh, that that's probably a safe that's a safe number. I think we're going to see uh, new all time record highs in gold uh, that are going to far surpass you know twenty two hundred dollars. Uh, unfortunately, and a lot of it has to do with uh, the fact that they told us they fixed everything when they didn't. They could have. They had an opportunity to do the right thing. The central bank could have done the right thing but they didn't our elected officials could have done the right thing but they didn't nope instead what did they do they they allow every, all of us well not you know who have we lost our homes right and and i say we you know you know what i mean i didn't lose mine but my mate my neighbors did just on my street, we only had, we lived on a cul-de-sac in Anthem at the time. Uh, we had, I think it was like 12 homes, maybe 13, something like that. 12 to 14 homes on it. And I'm just going through my head. One, two, three. I had four people out of, you know, a third, close to a third of my street lost their homes. And I think that's a similar story everywhere. But the banks got bailed out. Right? The banks got bailed out. And, and remember, too big to fail. I said it right in the title, too big to fail. So what do you do? You make them smaller. We made them bigger. Uh, and this is why. It's just this simple. Gold is, is just going uh, to where it's supposed to be. It is the only thing that's been money. Uh, fiat money is designed to go to zero. 
Uh, that's how it's always been intended. That's how it's always happened. And how does it go to zero? Because you just print too much of it. And let's face it, we have papered the world. Uh, speaking of printing, you, we know now every day the Fed has the repo window open. This very simply, and they won't say it to you this way, because they don't want you to worry. The bank needs money. They're bailing out banks because they need money. And the Federal Reserve, right, is caught off guard once again. They'll, they'll say they weren't, but they were. I mean, if they knew that they needed money, why wouldn't they have announced months ago, hey, we're going to open the Fed window uh, in the end of September, right, and tell everybody they didn't. They were caught off guard as usual, but $75 billion a day they loan out. Then three times between now and October 10th, they're going to have a special longer-term funding where the Fed is going to loan these banks money for weeks. Instead of them having to come to the Fed window every day, and they they said that we're going to do three of those over, what, not even three weeks, at $30 billion, which kind of means, hey, they were probably expecting, what, 31, 32, maybe $33 billion. We'll do $30 billion. That'll be good. Today was the very first day that they did one of these special. So think about today. They did. They still did the seventy-five billion. Now they've done the thirty billion. So today they had to lend banks a hundred and five billion dollars. Yeah, don't worry. Don't worry about your money. It's real safe in your bank account. You just keep thinking that. That thirty billion dollar auction had. $68 billion of requests. <laughs> Whoops! These geniuses. We'll be back after the break. Don't worry, everything's fine. They don't want to talk about it on the TV. They don't want you to know. And... It's one of these things that tells me we're still not ready yet. Because you would think the first thing our government would want, the first thing that our bankers would want, is for there to be transparency. So uh, the American worker isn't, you know, Sideswipe and, and blindsided so they could prepare. In one day, banks asked for a hundred and forty six billion dollars. How much liquidity do they need? The Fed, the auction size for the two auctions combined was only a hundred and five billion. That means the banks were short seventy billion dollars of liquidity. Both auctions, the seventy five billion dollar auction was oversubscribed almost uh, a little over eighty billion. The thirty billion dollar auction it was sixty six billion, sixty five point seven five billion for thirty. And the banks are worried People are speculating that there's a bunch more banks that need to go to the window, but they're they're waiting to the last minute because they're worried about a leak. That that's the latest thing. This is why all of a sudden now gold's up nine now, uh, fifteen thirty three and rising. Silver getting ready to uh, to break uh, eighteen sixty here. So I thought initially, and I think initially it was uh, the comments by the president that that led to Wall Street kind of going from positive to negative. But now uh, Wall Street has taken a, a, a big leg down uh, here 
down almost down, uh, down over 200 points right now. A lot of that being that that there's word on the street that a lot more banks need to go to the repo window, but they're worried about a leak. They're worried about analysts, reporters, somebody finding out. So they want to wait till the last possible second. In other words, hey, we don't go to the window until we absolutely, positively have to go there. And from what, what they're speculating is that a lot more banks need to go there. I don't know what the central bank's going to do. I mean, it's obvious to me that we have an issue now with liquidity at pretty much all of the major U.S. banks. Uh, I would think, I would think, based on the dollars that I'm seeing, this is probably all the banks we hear of. You know, J.P. Morgan, B of A, Wells Fargo, right? These got to be big, big banks. I don't know uh, if the the little corner bank is at the repo window or not. I I, I don't know that. Uh, but when we're talking about you know 146 billion dollars in a single day, and that uh, from what what you know if this is out there then you know that a lot of other banks need to go to this window. They don't have enough liquidity. And, and, and you know, it would be interesting. Will they increase the size of these repo operations? I mean, look at what happened to this uh, this this longer one that had $30 billion on it. They, they had $66 billion of requests. And from what we're hearing, there is a bunch of banks that know before, you know, there's only two more of those left between now and October 10th that need to use it, but they're worried about leaks, so they didn't come forward. How big is the problem? I don't know, but all of a sudden now, things look a lot worse than they did even a few days ago. You think about it, the first repo auction was last Tuesday. $55 billion was all that. That was requested last Tuesday. So a week later, we've gone from $55 billion to $146 billion. And they won't tell us who it is? 800-951-0592. Uh, I'm going to cut you all a break. Yesterday, I ran a special on twenty dollar liberties at fifteen ninety five. I'm gonna honor fifteen ninety five. There are no volume discounts on it today. Fifteen ninety five on on twenty dollar liberties. Uh, you got spot here now bumping up on fifteen thirty five at eight hundred nine five one. Zero five nine two rolls of silver eagles, four hundred and forty five dollars a roll right now. Uh, if you want to add some silver eagles to it, eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. We had Case Schiller out. For those of you that don't know that, that is the the home price report. Year over year, the lowest growth in home prices since 2012. And without Phoenix in Las Vegas, there may have been no home price increase. Very small, uh, according to Case Schiller. Phoenix in Vegas, uh, the only cities above 4%. Uh, Seattle has already gone negative. Uh, and these are the 20 largest cities they do. So, you know, pretty much where all the people live. Uh, Case Schiller now saying the lowest home appreciation since 2012. I don't know if low rates can bump, bump them up anymore. That may be it on the housing side as well. Just another one. We're not there yet. But another thing to worry about when we talk about, you know, where's the economy headed? If, if home prices start falling, that's another new factor uh, that we need to weigh in. Final segment coming up.
Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Got three lines uh, open. Uh, Gold's up eleven fifteen thirty five. I'll leave this price at fifteen ninety five until fifteen forty gold. At fifteen forty gold, you add five bucks. At fifteen fifty gold, right at fifteen. Uh, I've I've got a feeling uh, that that the that we're looking here at a bigger run. The Dow continuing to fall. Uh, they're saying, you know, the tough talk on trade. Oh, it, it, it's the the Trump impeachment talks. It's, it's neither of those. It's the fact that the banks need a lot more money than we really thought. I mean, and I thought $75 billion a day was a lot. They need a lot more than that. Uh, the rumor now is swir- swirling on Wall Street is that a number of banks have yet to go to the window for fear of leaks and fears that reporters and analysts are going to find out. Boy, I'd love to know who's on that list. And that there are a lot more banks that are going to be coming to the Fed window over the next couple of weeks, which is going to put a lot of pressure on. Uh, I expect at the next Fed meeting we're going to hear a lot more about quantitative easing. More rate cuts are on the way. Uh, we're looking at, at new high, six-year highs at gold. $1,700 is firmly in the crosshairs. Uh, right now, uh, U.S. $20 liberties at fifteen ninety-five. Gold's now up 12 and a half, 13 here, uh, 1537 at eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two, take the time. Start adding to your portfolios. I've been telling you since the summer, it is time to increase your allocation into the gold and silver markets. Am I telling you to put all your money in there? I'm not. I've always told you be diversified. Stocks look pricey. That's all I'm going to say. They look awfully, awfully pricey. A lot of weird, similar things to other crashes, failed IPOs, price multiples, and, and earnings that that don't line up, and, and, of course, all the other things trading on, how many investigations here or there or whatever. Go to allamericangold.com. Uh, Kramer talks all about all that stuff and, and, and a lot more out there as well. 800 800- Nine five one zero five nine two. The Dow is down to twenty. Uh, the S and P is down thirty. Uh, the Nasdaq is down a hundred and twenty-seven points. Uh, crude oil is down a dollar. Uh, that's the other. I guess we'll wait and see if uh, whether or not uh, the Saudis can deliver. Uh, but but either way, I think a lot of people now talking about crude's down a dollar, not because of the Saudis. Crude's down a dollar because people are getting a little worried that this this slowdown may be a little slower than they really told us about. We'll see. We'll see. But don't we have the right to know what banks need money? Don't we have that right to know? Right? And, of course, we sit here and, of course, nope, you sure don't because uh, if you do, you'll take away, you'll, you'll pull your deposits, which means what? Now the bank even needs more money. You see, it's just a vicious cycle. 800-951-0592. Patriot Radio News Hour. Everybody take care. Have a great day out there. Uh, stay dry. Maybe we'll get some more rain here in the valley.